Now this week in the class for week four, we're putting significant emphasis on selecting strategies and resources. So that's what you'll see in the weekly activities. On screen, I've given you an image taken from a teacher, Shonda Douglas, and this is her interpretation of that SAMR model, that substitution, augmentation, modification, replacement model that many K-12 teachers use. And I'm starting to see SAMR creep into the non-K-12 education realm. What's interesting about SAMR as a methodology for selecting a tool or strategy is that this particular model, as it's called, hasn't necessarily been evaluated through empirical research like many other selection models or instructional design models have. So you'll also see in this week's activities, I've given you a brand new article. And when I say brand new, I mean this thing's been out less than three weeks that was co-authored by two individuals in the field who I know. You'll see Metha and uh, Josh's names on the article from Tech Trends. But they did kind of a meta-analysis of the model, looking at how it's being used and what's in the literature to make some specific recommendations. So keep in mind that while I give you resources related to SAMR and we talk about it, I urge you to be incredibly critical when using this, applying it, but also take that same critical focus, that same critical lens, and apply it anytime you're considering why this particular tool or strategy or activity or resource or reference. In some cases, we're going to be bound by a stakeholder's decision. And that is where we tend to get into the most trouble, especially when you see a school that goes to one-to-one -one iPad. Well, as we discussed last week, without proper professional development, that's not necessarily going to work out so well. Or maybe you're in industry or in higher education and you're being given a mandated learning management system to use. Well, not all LMSs are created equal. They're not implemented equally. And there was a great conversation that came out of the higher ed industry discussion last week about a good example of an LMS implementation and the redundant backups and plan B's that were in place to support it. So not only are you asking yourself, why this tool, but then you have to take that decision a step further to fully plan out your contingency plan. Why this tool? What's it going to help with? What are we going to do when it doesn't work the way we think it's going to work? What else can we use? Or are there other redundancies we can build into the system? So that's what I want you to think about as you work through this week's activities. With that in mind, let's take a look at the week four expectations. Use the on-screen links to navigate to the section of the overview you wish to access.